Hi students, today we are going to be looking at questions involving angles. Question number one. Work out the angles for A, B, and C as they are indicated in the diagram. Now, before we even begin trying to solve this question, there are two things that we need to know. Number one. The sum of angles in a triangle is 180 degrees. Number two, on a straight line, the sum of the angles is 180 degrees. So we're going to be using this number quite a bit in our solving of this problem. So the interior angle, so all the angles that are in here have a sum of 180 degrees, whereas these two angles as well have a sum of 180 degrees. For problems such as these, it's very important to organize your work and to break it up. And we are going to focus on one angle at a time. So you're probably thinking, where do I start from? I'm only given one value, which is the 64 degrees over here, but I'm also given two other hints, things that I need to notice within the diagram. And that's these two little lines, but we're gonna get to those. Knowing that the sum of angles in a triangle equals 180 degrees, to figure out the value of angle A and angle B, we can do a subtraction. So we do a subtraction of 180 degrees minus the 64 degrees. And we get a value of 160 degrees. And this corresponds to angle A and angle B. Now, they don't give you any more numerical information about angles A and angle B, but we need to come back to these two little lines. These two lines indicate that the triangle is isosceles. Now, when a triangle is isosceles, that means that those two sides have the same measure. What it means for us is that we can also logistically justify that the two angles A and B will also have the exact same measure. Now, how do we find the value of angle A? We are going to do the following. We're going to take that 116, and because we know that angles A and angle B have to have the exact same value, we're going to divide it by two, because that way we know there's an even split and they will have the same measure. So when I divide 116 degrees by two, I get 58 degrees. Now this 58 degrees is not only the value of angle A, but it's also the value of angle B. You can even draw in your diagram so we know that angle A and angle B both have a value of 58 degrees. If you'd like to check your work, you can add up 58, 58, and 64. and we get a total value of 180 degrees, just so that we are fact-checking and we know that we've done the correct work thus far. So we've identified angle A, and we know that angle A and B are the same. We can move on to angle C. Now angle C, we're just going to fill in um, the knowledge that we gained from the previous steps, so 58 degrees and 58 degrees. Now angle C, because it's on the straight line, and we know that two angles on a straight line equal 180 degrees. So if we know two angles will equal 180 degrees, we will use the information we have. So angle C is determined by that 180 degrees and the subtraction of the 58 degrees of angle B. Right? So we are very much just subtracting angle B here. 
once we do that, angle C is equal to a value of 122 degrees. Because we used the straight line theorem and the fact that 180 degrees is the sum of those two angles. Therefore, to conclude, the value of angle A is equal to 58 degrees. The value of angle B is also equal to 58 degrees. And the value of angle C is equal to 122 degrees. It's important that you show your work for every step. So the justification is shown through mathematics. A lot of the times when you're solving problems such as these, it's important to note that when they're talking about triangles or angles themselves, it's important to justify. And the way that you do justify is by showing your work. So that concludes question one.